Okay. Um, I could just put the law of signs up here and say, that's it, that's what the law of signs is, that's how you use it. Or we could talk about where it actually comes from, uh, which is kind of interesting. I think some people may actually like this. So um, the law of signs is what we call an extended proportion. It helps you solve for a triangle. When we talk about solving a triangle, that means you can find all of the angles and you can find all of the sides, right? And obviously you're gonna be limited with the information that you're given. Okay, so to set up the law of sines, here's what we're going to do. We're going to drop a height segment. Okay, let's see if I can hit this right. Eh, about right like that. We're going to call that H. Okay, so this is H right here. Now what that does, if I drop a height segment, a perpendicular to here, I've got two right triangles down here now. Okay, if I wanted to express angle C, with some of the information that's up here. I can't use A because side length A is this entire side length, right? But I could say that, what could I use it? I could use H and B, and if I wanted to create some relationship, some trigonometric relationship between angle C, side H, and side B in this right triangle, I've got the opposite side H, and I've got the hypotenuse B, so the opposite side hypotenuse involves the sine ratio. So I could say that the sine of angle C is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. I could get that relationship. Okay. Now, let's jump over here to this other triangle that I formed, this other right triangle. If I wanted to set up some sort of relationship with angle B, right? again, I can't use A because I've, I've, I've cut it right into two pieces, so that, that technically stopped being angle A when we created two of these, I suppose. So down here, if I wanted to make some relationship with angle B, I'd have the opposite side, and I'd have this hypotenuse. So I could say that the sine of angle B is equal to the opposite side over that hypotenuse. Right? Now both of those relationships involve the variable H. Right? We see that. So I could solve for H in this problem by multiplying both sides by B, and I'd end up with this expression. Okay, that's not the law of sines. Don't, don't, don't stop just yet. But if I, I did the same thing here and multiplied by C, I'd get C times the sine of B is, equal, is also equal to H. Now, understand that this H, it's just this one segment, right? So both of these statements are equal to H. By the transitive property, that means that B sine C is equal to C sine B. That statement is true. Okay. Now from there, a little, a little math magic. If I divide this by C, and again, for what reason, right? This is just a way to show why the law of sines works. Okay, we'll get to the end eventually. But if I chose to divide both sides there by C, I'd end up with this statement. Okay. Now I could take this expression and I could divide everything I see here by the side length B that's in the numerator right there. And then I would divide this. So now I'm just dividing both, side, both sides by B. If I do that, this B would slide up into this denominator and cancel with that B. So I'd end up with the sine of C over C equals the sine of B over B. And this is two-thirds of the extended proportion of the law of sines. Okay, now it doesn't go in alphabetical order, and I'm kind of shortcutting this, but I could do the same thing with A and C, for example, if I dropped a height segment like this then I'd still have C and I'd be able to write a relationship in terms of A and then I'd have angle A to use as well. So I could do that three different times and end up with three different proportions. I could show this, I could show that these are equal, and I could show that these are equal, okay, through that same process. But the law of sines kind of puts all three of those statements together as one big transitive statement saying, if this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, then this is equal to this, and they're all equal to each other. This is the law of sines, okay? Now, we don't actually ever solve the, the entire proportion at once. We can only use two of these ratios at a time, okay? 
but you can choose any two of these ratios to set equal to each other to solve the triangles that we're going to be doing.